السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ومن اتبع هداه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In this session إن شاء الله will be uh, talking about the قيام and the meaning of قيام and the virtues of قيام قيام linguistically it means standing from the Arabic word قاما and uh, but of course according to the uh, technical definition of the sharia uh, this is token is referring to that particular prayer which is normally uh, conducted which is normally uh, performed during the night and uh, specifically in ramadan and outside ramadan that is known as qiyam as well so the <clears throat> and also sometimes they call qiyam sometimes it's called qiyam al-layl standing at night so these two terms can be used synonymously and interchangeably. <clears throat> and there are other common names for the same prayer, which is, I mentioned, the prayer of the night, Salatul Layl. Also, Tahajjud is another name. Another name for the same Salah is called Tahajjud. Uh, after, because of the uh, root, Hajada means remained awake at, at night. And also Witr, it's also called Witr, which means odd number. And also it's called Taraweeh. So all these names for the same salah. Some people, they think that they are different salah. They say, that's why you found Muslims in Ramadan, we pray the taraweeh, we're going to pray the tahajjud. They think that there is a difference. Actually, there isn't any difference between all these four names. And the word witr, uh, technically, it means, according to the definition in sharia, it refers to the last one or three rak'ah of the qiyam. The last rak'ah or the last three rak'ahs, they are called witr, because they are odd numbered. And also, it is referring to the whole salah. They call it witr. The whole salah is called, taraweeh is called witr. That's why in Bukhari, Fan, Bukhari is using the word witr when he is uh, in his books, in his sahih. Uh, there are some misconceptions that some people think that the hajjud is a night prayer different from the qiyam or taraweeh, which is not. It is the same. It is the same. Also, uh, some think that nafil prayers at night are only recommended during Ramadan. This is another misconception. They think that you could perform nafil or tahajjud only during Ramadan. After Ramadan, you don't do that. Uh, some also think that... Uh, <coughs> Taraweeh is most commonly used to describe it in Ramadan, uh, but does not make it a different prayer. Taraweeh is word used for the same salah, but it's not different. And the reason this prayer uh, salah is called taraweeh, why it is called taraweeh? Because of, it was due to the, the uh, lengthy recitation. People, they used to recite and read for a long period of time. So they would feel tired. So after four rak'ahs, they would relax. They would sit down and relax. So to get refreshed, then they would resume. That's why the word taraweeh, which means resting, which means resting. Uh, and the, uh, the merit and the virtue of the tahajjud, it was the norm of the believers. This was the norm, the normal practice of the believers is the tahajjud. And you will be surprised, brothers and sisters, that tahajjud or night prayer was fard in the beginning. On the sahaba, it was a fard, it was obligatory. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted the sahaba to be ready to, hold the sh to shoulder the responsibilities that he is going to place on their shoulders. So they should have a high spiritual level. And they should be very close to their Lord. That's why in the early days of the da'wah, the Qiyam al-Layl was obligatory upon the Sahaba. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
made it easy and it became sunnah. And it became sunnah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described to us the situation of the companions. He said, كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَرُوا وَبِالْأَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا Subhanallah. This was the, 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 the status of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They, the pious ones, used to sleep but little at night. And at the Sahar, the very late night, they are seeking Allah's forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجَةِ They don't feel relaxed the moment they place their bodies on the bed, the bed they go to, to sleep. They get up immediately and they go on to pray. And they get up to pray. They don't enjoy sleep because they love the Salah. The love is standing in front of their Lord because they enjoy the sweetness and the delightfulness which they experience. And in the hadith which is in Musnad Ahmad and in Sahih Muslim from the narration of Abu Huraira عنه, he said, the Prophet وسلم, said, the best of prayers after those prescribed are those prayed in the depth of the night. Those prayers that are prayed in the depth of the night. People are asleep. You leave the bed, you get up, you take wudu, and you pray. And you stand in front of your Lord and you shed the tears. You shed the tears and you humble yourself in front of your Creator. That's the best salah. No showing off. Nobody sees you except your Lord. And also, it is a sign of gratitude. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used to stand brothers and sisters till his feet swell. Aisha anha said, Why should you do this, O Allah's Messenger, when all of your sins, past and future, have been forgiven? He replied, Afala akuna abdun shakura. Should I not be a grateful servant of Allah? Grateful servant of Allah. And this is the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He used to stand in front of Allah until his feet swell. And one of the companions, he prayed behind him one night. And the Prophet Sallallahu in the first rak'ah, he read Surah Al-Baqarah. Completely. Surah Al-Baqarah completely. Then An-Nisa, then Ali Imran. He didn't keep an order. Baqarah, Nisa, Ali Imran. In one rak'ah. This is only in one rak'ah. So this is it. So the Prophet Sallallahu he said, shouldn't I be a grateful servant to my Lord? It's also a sign of goodness. It's a sign that this person is a pious person. This is a sign of piety and righteousness. The Prophet Sallallahu said regarding Abdullah ibn Umar, نِعْمَ الرَّجُلْ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ لَوْ كَانَ يُسَلِّ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ Which means, he said to, uh, regarding Abdullah ibn Umar, would in, uh, what a beautiful and what an excellent man, Abdullah ibn Umar, if he prayed all night, if he prayed at night. His son says, Salim, after hearing this from the Prophet ﷺ, his father, Abdullah, his father would not sleep at night, but very little. After that, Abdullah ibn Umar used to pray most of the night, most of the, of, most of the night praying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is actually a reason why uh, this, the Prophet ﷺ said this? Because Abdullah ibn Umar, he was always uh, craving to, see, to have a dream, to see something about the hereafter. And in one of his dreams, he saw that two angels came and they had taken him to the hellfire. And when he narrated this to his uh, sister, and she reported it to the Prophet ﷺ, he said this hadith, that he should pray the whole night, or most of the whole night. Uh, means of entering the Jannah, the Prophet ﷺ said in Tirmidhi, he said, O oh people, spread the greeting of Salaam. Spread the greeting of Salaam. That when you see each other, you say, Salaamu Alaikum. Provide food to the needy and pray at night while the people are asleep. Wanamu wasallu bil nas niyam. And pray at night while the people are asleep. You would then enter Jannah with peace. He would enter the Jannah, the paradise, heaven with peace. So it is a way, it is a means of getting you to the Jannah. It's a means of getting you to the Jannah. Also, it is an accept, a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our supplication. 
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim which is very very important that the Prophet sallallahu said our Lord descends every night to the lowest heaven when only one third of the night has remained and he says who would invoke me so that I would answer him who would ask me so that I would give him who would seek my forgiveness so that I would forgive him and this is very important hadith and it is should be understood in its real sense that Allah descends yes Allah descends Allah comes on the day of judgment all these things but within the understanding within the the frame within the frame laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa as-sami'u al-basir nothing is like unto him and he is all seerer or hearer so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends yes Allah descends and he asks because some muslim might say no Allah doesn't descend what descends is his mercy we ask them akhi tell me the who forgives who forgives the forgiver or the mercy of course the forgiver and the hadith says Allah asks who wants me to forgive him so I will forgive him so this is what happened some might raise the question but you know that the night varies over the globe maybe it is here one third, this is the third night of here and the night here and somewhere it's different so what happens which the answer is already given by the scholars and they said wherever it happens that that is the last third of the night the divine descent is there wherever you are in the last third night of uh, third of the night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends whether you are here or somewhere else also it is a sign of closeness of Allah subhanahu wa that you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned in the hadith in Tirmidhi and Nasa'i where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the closest that a servant is to his lord is in the last part of the night if you can be among those who remember Allah at that hour do so do so if you can be among those who are at the last night the last part of the night they get up and they pray and they supplicate to Allah be among them because those are the the uh, sincerest devotees who have devoted their life to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also it is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also it is among the most righteous the one who prays tahajjud he would be among the most righteous on the day of resurrection as in the hadith which is in sunan abu daud the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when a man wakes his wife at night he gets up and he wakes his wife at night and they pray two rak'ah together they are recorded among the men and women who frequently remember allah so uh, the angels will write you and your wife among those who remember allah a lot dhakirin allah wa dhakirat so those who remember allah a lot so because you get up and you prayed and you as, as well you woke up your wife said to her get up and in another narration that if she refuses you sprinkle water on her face okay you spray water on her face and also the same thing when she gets up to pray and you are still asleep she can do the same thing to you but i'm always rem- reminding our sisters not to do that because i am afraid this might lead to something else which is uh, not pleasing as well so here she can wake up her husband in a nice manner in a nice way and uh, there is another uh, manner or uh, etiquette we, not, we should ha- uh, understand here and that is the constancy when we do something we sh- we need to be very constant we need to be very constant we reach the uh, <coughs> the end of this episode may allah accept our deeds and your deeds and may allah increase our knowledge and inshallah we are going to open the floor for questions and we try to entertain as many questions as possible so if you have any question don't feel hesitant to ask yes dear sheikh uh, during the month of ramadan we perform tarawih prayer and you said that it's important to perform the night prayer regularly in a consistent way how 
should I be well disciplined during the whole year to keep myself observing the night prayer? <laughs> the uh, the the tahajjud or the uh, praying the night prayer constantly, uh, this can be only achieved through training. One should train himself. And you should start gradually, step by step. For instance, you train yourself on normal days. You just you start, you begin with two. Only with two. Just before Fajr, 15 minutes before Fajr, or 20 minutes before Fajr, get up and pray two rak'ahs. And actually, it is the sunnah, the Prophet ﷺ, when he begins the night prayer, he begins with two light rak'ahs, light ones. That means not long ones. Then he would prolong the, the salah. So that's how we should. You need to train yourself. Then you build up. Then next, maybe next day after a few days, then f four rak'ahs, then, and then you carry on. Because that's the best thing, the constancy, that you need to be constant, consistent in performing and carrying out the, the ibadah. Because what is the use if you, uh, for instance, you pray tonight uh, 11 rak'ahs, the second day nothing. Or maybe today you are fasting Thursday and Monday, and then after that you leave it. So you need to train yourself, because some, you reach at a point where you'll give up. If you start at one go, at full swing, you will reach a time where you feel tired, and then you'll go back to square one. So you need to train yourself, and you go gradually, step by step. And of course, by supplicating to Allah, and of course, go to bed early, if you want to get for tahajjud, don't waste your whole night watching television, moving from one channel to another. Then you will not be able to, to get up and pray tahajjud. Next question, please. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, Islam now is the fastest gro growing religion in the world. And uh, Islam wins new uh, converts by hundreds on a daily basis. Uh, you say that uh, the best thing for the Muslim to do in Ramadan is to read the Quran. What about our Muslim brothers in China or the States or Trinidad and Tobago or Japan who don't know Arabic? How can they uh, get the, the benefit of the Quran in Ramadan? Mm -hmm. This is a good question. And alhamdulillah, the, the, the Quran has been translated in various uh, tongues. Maybe, inshallah, we hope that one day all the languages of the world so he should work hard. Actually, I recommend every Muslim to work hard. This is incumbent upon every Muslim to learn how to read the Quran. And it is incumbent upon every Muslim to learn the Arabic language. I hope this message will reach every Muslim, that it is incumbent upon every Muslim to learn the language, so, because that is the tool, that's the instrument through which you will understand the Book of Allah and you understand the deen in general. Otherwise, your knowledge will remain superficial. You will not understand the deen in great depth. So it is uh, incumbent upon Muslims to learn the Arabic language, to read the Quran properly. And there's no harm in reading the translation or the, uh, the commentary in your mother tongue. But at least you dedicate yourself, and even if you are working hard, the hadith, the one who reads the Quran and is facing difficulty, his reward is twice. The reward will be twice. And the one who reads it fluently and professionally, he will be with the angels, as we know that. So those who are struggling and working, to try and doing their best to, uh, to read the book of Allah, they will be rewarded twice. So they should not uh, give it a try. They should read the book of Allah and understand it and uh, seek help from the other translations or uh, commentary in their mother tongue. Next question. Allah has granted some people a concession to break their fast, like the travelers and the sick, but they refrain from accepting this concession. Uh, are, will, uh, will they uh, be, uh, get the whole reward, or are they going to be punished in the hereafter? If I got your question correctly, though it is permissible to break the fast, they didn't break the fast. They traveled and they I explained this in the beginning, I explained this in the beginning, and I said it is an issue of, uh, there are differences. Some scholars, they say you break, some scholars, they say you're not. And the room is there, the flexibility is there. So those will not be punished, I'm telling you. 
and the reward inshallah will be given to them as long as that they didn't feel tired and fatigued during the course of the of the journey and uh, inshallah we until we see you inshallah next week uh, sorry next session may allah reward all of you and may allah accept our deeds and your deeds until then will assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh oh, 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 oh.